What's up, everybody? It's the Waiting for Next Year.com podcast. Very special episode of the podcast. None other than Chuck Booms is going to break down the opening week Cleveland Browns debacle against the Jets. Um, but I first need to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Um, you start your free trial, 30 day free trial with a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com forward slash WFNY. There's over 180,000 audiobooks on there. I'm sure you can find one or more. Um, I listen to a lot of business books. It's really Im- it kind of boring and maybe embarrassing, but that's what I listen to. So they're not quite self-help books, but they're business self-help type books. So that's what I listen to. Um, also, you can uh, get signed up with FanDuel. Waiting for next year is a FanDuel affiliate now, so you can get signed up by going to tinyurl.com forward slash FanDuel WFNY. FanDuel WFNY. tinyurl.com forward slash FanDuel WFNY. It's one day fantasy. We've talked about the struggles with having that fantasy team, especially when you draft a really bad team starting in week one. You've got, you know, 12 or 13 weeks with playoffs that you have to watch this awful team and scour the waiver wire, and it's just brutal. So you can avoid all that. You can jump on FanDuel and play week to week, picking different lineups and competing um, for real cash. So, um, that's that's uh, tinyurl.com forward slash FanDuel WFNY. And now, none other than Chuck Booms. Waiting for next year. Waiting for next year. And on the line... Uh, somebody who uh, you used to hear every single Monday after pitiful, awful Browns games, but now he's he's here with us. Chuck Booms, how's it going, man? Hey, Greg, a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, I, I've, in in the in the name of of being honest and intellectual honesty, I, I have to tell you that uh, you you used to have me screaming at my radio at times. <laughs> it's uh, I'd be lying to you if I said that you didn't elicit that reaction in me and, and maybe some other uh, fans as well. What, what's, it been, what's it been like uh, being off the radio? I, I appreciate that. Go ahead. No, Sorry. I appreciate that. I think, I think yeah, I, I think that that's the way to do it. I think if people are upset, uh, that's good. Uh, I think if people like what you're doing, that's good. I think the worst thing, you know, this from doing your own show uh, is, you know, if, the, if people are indifferent, then you're like, maybe I better go back to the drawing board. And I don't do it just to do it or elicit a reaction. That's just simply who I am. But um, I think we're all that way, Craig, in many ways. I mean, I'll watch MSNBC just to drive myself nuts <laughs> because those psychotic liberals on there, I mean, I, I, I you know, I don't know. And, and my friends are like, why do you watch it? It drives you fucking nuts. I go, I know, but I love it. You know, I love it. I mean, you, you have to have some of that balance, I think, uh, to make it great. I'm just grateful that you listened. Yeah, well, it's like a it's like a, a roller coaster, you know. You're 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 going on a roller coaster so that you could be scared. It's like a controlled scared environment. Yeah, that's actually a very good analogy. That's what it was. And uh, if the brown season is a roller coaster, then I feel like we we just rode Final Destination three, where the tracks come apart and the thing goes flying off into the fucking. <laughs> Right off into the into the nighttime sky, and all the kids die on the ride. I mean, I I, I tell you, I had to have people come over and help me get my chin off the ground yesterday. Um, I did tailgate nineteen again, the uh, the great the number one uh, show in Cleveland uh, pregame with Bernie Kozar and Bob Golick and uh and for Dixon, of course, uh, Tony Zarello, the great host, and, and it was a great show, and I actually said on the show, I have a bad feeling that McCown could get hurt. This is a pretty rough defense the Jets have, and, um, you know, he, um, you know, we could easily see Johnny, and um, as soon as he did the helicopter thing, Craig, towards the end zone, the phone rang, and it was Kozar, and he goes, what are you, clairvoyant? <laughs> so uh it's 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 pretty scary but i'll tell you this any team in year two that could spend an entire year in off season mini camps training camps preseason 
and come in that ill-prepared at basically every, there were only two guys who played good, Manziel and the punter. Uh, everybody else, it was a, a laughing stock and a disaster. And I honestly, if that was my team, I would fire everybody today. I would clean house. Well, and all you have to do is look to the opposite sideline to see how you how you turn around a four and twelve team. And we don't know what the Jets are going to turn out to be by the end of the year. But they co- they come in after switching coaches after a four and twelve season, and they they trade a fifth round pick for Brandon Marshall. They get Darrell Revis. They they do a, a bunch of things because they couldn't handle another four and twelve season, and they they put this around whoever you know whatever quarterback. It's not like they solve their quarterback problems. But the Browns, the Browns didn't knew they couldn't solve their quarterback problems either. And look what they, you know, look what they put around Josh McCown slash whoever. Well, I, it, it's absolutely right. I mean, you sit there and you go, no one needed a receiver, uh, Craig, more than the Cleveland Browns. And somehow the Jets trade a fifth round you know, uh, pick and they get Brandon Marshall. I mean, really? Where, where are we? What are we doing? Um, uh, it, it, it's uh, off at the Buffalo Bills yesterday. Put in, put in a good quality coach, Rex Ryan. They don't have a great quarterback. They have Tyrod Taylor. Kid played really good yesterday. I played, uh, Luck and the Colts and a, and a perennial playoff team the past few years under Andrew Luck. Um, you know, it, it, only this team and this organization seems to make it hard. But when you look at the moves that they make, Craig, it's it's easy to see why nothing ever goes forwards. It either goes sideways or backwards. I mean, that Monty Ball is cut. He's 24, the great running back. He set every record you could imagine for college football running backs at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, he was a John Fox guy, so, you know, they all do the my guy crap. And so he's out there for the taking, and we go and get – a guy that's got a knee or an ankle rather, and we might not see him for four weeks. Who does that? Yeah. Who does that? I mean, you've got to be brain dead. Yeah. And, and the Browns are also doing it with their GM suspended sitting on the sidelines to the point where, you know, the, Terrell Pryor makes the 53 man roster and maybe and maybe there's no second layer to this story maybe the maybe it's all right out there for everybody to see but it does feel like well they waited for Ray Farmer to get suspended so that they could cut one of his guys in favor of somebody who wasn't going to participate for four or five weeks it are they so are they so confused that Terrell Pryor is is the 53rd man on the roster one day and then cut for Robert Turbin the next day. You're telling me all those tight ends, all those defensive backs. You're telling me all those players are better than than this. This is this is the best team they could put together. Well, first of all, Justin Gilbert would have been released immediately for for the road rage incident. He not only sucks, but he's a nightmare off the field. He's a piece of garbage. It's a blown pick. I love how they act like we don't know. You know. If I step in dog shit and, you know, I start walking around the room at, at your house and, and I looked up, you know, and I'm the only one who did it, I can't, you know, they try to do the, well, but I don't think you understand. It's not really dog shit. It's, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah, it is. It's dog shit. It smells. The pick is terrible. It's a bust. We get it. And we would have more respect for you. Like you would for me if I said, my God, Craig, I'm so, I don't know how I stepped in dog shit and I brought it in your house. I apologize. I'll clean it up. It's my mistake. You would go, okay, that's pretty cool. When you sit there and try and pretend like it's not happened, uh, when the entire city and every Browns fan knows it has, it's insulting. And they're insulting. Justin Did- Gilbert has no right being on an NFL football team and definitely no right being on this team. And you wouldn't have wanted to see Terrell Pryor and Johnny yesterday doing some stuff together? Wow. That would have been something to see. And by the way, had Johnny gotten hurt, do you know who the quarterback would have been? No, I don't. Brian Hartline. Oh, man, that's so embarrassing. Did you hear Zach Jackson's story about uh, Justin Gilbert during the pregame show yesterday? Um, Zach, Jack- Zach Jackson talked to an opposing coach, uh, another coach in the league somewhere, who scouted Justin Gilbert, whose, whose people looked into him, and they went to his pro day or, or some, some kind of a, a a workout and they asked Justin Gilbert to field punts 
And Justin Gilbert said, no, nah, you can look at my tape. I'm not going to do that. And so that coach scratched him off the list. He went from being a potential draft pick to uh, the blacklist, the the blackballed list of of players that they weren't going to draft. And here the Browns take him, you know, way up high. Um, and now this is this is what that yields. Well, that's that that. And then, by the way, uh, I know they want to hang that pick on Ray Farmer. That was Mike Patton's guy. He uh-huh. wanted that guy. And, uh, he got that guy and he can't run from it. That's his pick. That was part of his deal to take the coaching job when, when he's, you know, cause he, he knew that the second pick was going to be probably Haslam and Farmer or whatever. He wanted that pick and the pick stinks. And there is absolutely no reason that Terrell Pryor, and Terrell Pryor played yesterday, I can tell you this. How many balls did Manziel throw right in these guys' hands that they dropped? I mean, beautiful passes right in their hands, right in stride. Dropped it. Yeah, the fourth I mean, down, it was, it the fourth down ball. pass to to uh, the fourth down pass that ended the game um, to Taylor Gabriel was just an abomination. But by that point, I'd already, I already it, couldn't it, care. Yeah, it was over. It was over. But still, I mean, it was fitting that that it hit him right between the numbers. Yes. Perfect pass. That's um, ridiculous. So it, it couldn't have been shocking. I mean, you said that you, you know you you were kind of Nostradamus with the uh, the Josh McCown thing, but he he ran into uh, he you know he, when he got the first down earlier on in that drive, he ran into contact. He ran into contact three yep. times against Tampa Bay. Is is he just a? I mean, is this just what you what he is at thirty six? Is was it un? Was he not coached well enough, or or is this just the nature of having a Josh McCown? I'm going to go, uh, uh, normally I'd try, probably maybe would say the 36-year-old. Now I'm going to tell you that, that I don't think he's coached well enough. Uh, but I will tell you, you could see Johnny Manziel yesterday hook slide beautifully like a seasoned pro. Uh, you saw him scamper out of bounds three or four times where he took broken plays that were going nowhere and got you some positive yards, which is what makes him much better of a choice than Josh McCown. Um, and Josh McCown's running right into contact and getting his bell rung. So, um, you, you know, you want to know what this had to feel for for me, Craig? You remember 1999 that they went with Ty Detmer first game against Pittsburgh? He got his ass kicked, <laughs> <laughs> and in came Tim Couch, and the rest was history. You never saw Ty Detmer again. I would not be surprised. Uh, again, I'm going by if they know what they're doing, and they clearly don't. But there is no reason in the world to ever go back to Josh McCown. Johnny Manziel was the only bright spot yesterday, as I said, other than the punter. I love the beautiful 60-yard bomb downfield that hits the guy right in stride for a touchdown. They never throw downfield again. I know. Can someone explain that to me? Well, the running game was working so well. can Can we get somebody in the Cleveland media with some genitalia? to get to the press conference and go, can you explain why you see such a beautiful ball thrown by the kid? Which, by the way, was the play after he scampered for 30 yards and it got called back on a hold. I mean, it, 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 everything they do is inexplicable. And, and he had probably 50 yards of rushing called back. Johnny Manziel would have had close to 100 yards rushing. He was the leading rusher, but you really want to have the best news of the morning, Craig? Your second leading rusher was Josh McCown. <laughs> Which is but absolutely hysterical. Because this uh, this team was supposed to be built on supreme defense. Running the football. And running yeah. the damn ball and, and asking the quarterback to only make 8 to 10 plays per game. Well, you know, I want to tear that script up because that ain't happening. And... If you don't think Jeff Fisher, a defensive genius, isn't looking at that tape going, well, this ought to be fun, yes. he's going to know how to stop that instantly. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, home opener next week, the Browns have the uh, Tennessee Titans. Marcus Mariota kind of went went berserk against Tampa, four touchdowns, and uh I got to tell you, I'm I'm going opposite on this one. I, I'm not – I'm still not – I think the Browns laid an egg, but I'm still not scared of the Tennessee Titans, and we know how bad Tampa is. So I, I'm still holding the Browns to a higher standard and, and expecting them to uh, to right the ship next week at home against Tennessee. Am I crazy? Yeah, you are, only because <laughs> only, 
only because I have no faith whatsoever in this coaching staff. Um, uh, it, it, it was clear yesterday that, you know, they, they were doing, they were putting Manziel in impossible positions and somehow he kept getting us out of them. I mean, to run the ball, no gain, run the ball, no gain, and somehow he'd scramble and throw a pass for 11 yards and keep the drive going. That is not what you do for a 21-year-old quarterback. Uh, that's coming off of all the tragedy and nonsense that went on last year with his season. Uh, to think that they don't have a game plan to play to this kid's strengths and do whatever. That, that play calling was shit yesterday. Absolute garbage. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they just ought to be ashamed of themselves. Absolutely ought to be ashamed of themselves. Could they come up with something this week out of nowhere? I guess, but I'd be shocked. Because, like I said, if 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 he throws a sixty yard bomb right on stride to a Travis Benjamin touchdown, don't you think the rest of the players are going, "Where the hell was that the rest of the game?" There's no play action. The kid can move the pocket. Well, he had to move it since the offensive line sucked. Somebody might want to tell Alex Mack when Johnny's running, it's best if you don't run into him and knock the ball loose, uh, Mister Pro Bowler. Uh, another boneheaded play. How about the play call where Johnny got picked off? It's an out. Uh, I had a high school coach with me yesterday at Paradise Island in Euclid would say, uh, that's the most dangerous play you could call deep in your own territory because there's no check downs, Greg. It's two steps for Johnny and let it fly. There is no check down. It's an out. In other words, when that guy turns, the ball's got to be there, right? Right. So there's, there, it, 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 is, it is make or break. And, and if it's even a little off, and the pass may have been a little off, and the guy may not have been in the right route area, but either way, it's picked off. Um, it's picked off and touchdown. Yeah, yeah. And That's a terrible play call. It, it was a, a lot of suspect play calling. As you said, they... The the other one that gets me is when they when they run that that fake end around once at the beginning of the game and don't do anything with it and it's like well if you're gonna even fake it once don't you have to run it like two or three times and maybe do it once aren't you setting something up yeah you're supposed to yeah you're supposed to be setting it up for later oh, but I, yeah. I have no I have no idea what they're doing that's why I said when you said am I crazy yeah you're crazy because the coaching staff is hideous. I have absolutely no faith in Mike Patton. Never been a Patton guy. Seems like a likable fellow. Uh, has no head coaching experience. Didn't even, wasn't even a head coach and, uh, 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 couldn't even out coach his father in high school. So, uh, you know, this is, you know, it's gotten to the point of absurdity. I have said, and you listen to me on the radio for five years, ten years, however many years. I've said over and over, until you open the checkbook, Jimmy Haslam, and sign, and sign uh, a John Gruden, a, you know, whatever, a big Bill Cower, a big name coach, this is not getting turned around. It's just not. It's too dysfunctional to turn over to a guy, Mike Patton, who has no clue as to what he's doing, because... He's not going to get five to six to seven years to fix it. And as you just mentioned perfectly at the beginning of the interview, the Jets have top goals, but they figured out how to turn it around. Yeah, I uh, I I like Mike Pettin still, and and I simply because I think the defense has consistently gotten better. Um, you know, of all the things the that defense cl- looked like garbage yesterday. They did. Be they did. The run defense was a joke. You're telling me that's a team that didn't need Billy Wynn? They traded Billy Wynn for an unconditional pick from the Indian to Indianapolis? A possible Super Bowl team? They're dying to get their hands on Billy Wynn and we don't need him? And you saw that shit fest yesterday? Are you kidding me? No. We it's not Phil Taylor? I, we yeah. don't need Phil Taylor and Billy Wynn. Those are two standout defensive guys. I'll give you another one. We didn't need your ball sheared. Are you kidding me? And uh, Bill Belichick couldn't wait to get his hands on him. What kind of freaking morons are running the joint? Yeah, you're... those are three quality players right there. And I'm no Phil Taylor fan, but I'm going to give the guy his due. He's a he's a pretty damn good football player. And Billy Wynn was one of the best guys. A complete diamond in the rough you found in the seventh round, but because you didn't pick him, and you went and then they drafted Xavier Cooper, 
who plays the same position as Wynn, basically, and they let Wynn go, and what do you find out yesterday? Xavier Cooper's inactive. It's like the dumb and dumber. And it's not it's like incredible. they even say they didn't even really save any money on on the Billy Wynn thing. It's not like he was this high priced guy, and they saved they didn't save money on Phil Taylor either because he counts against the cap all year long. It's I don't even it just doesn't even make any sense. But uh, so speaking of guys, the Browns traded. What's the over under for the number of yards that Terrence West has against the Browns next week? Oh, that's great. Uh, Seventy five. <laughs> I'll take the over. 75. He had 12 for 44 or something, didn't he? Or I he don't. basically averaged four, four, up four a carry yesterday against Tampa. So, And it's amazing, right, that he's just absolute garbage to us. And Jeff Fisher, again, a guy who knows what he's doing, immediately grabs him. Indianapolis, they know exactly what they're doing. They immediately grab Billy Wynn. I mean, what, what, what in the world? Yeah, now I'm. We didn't need we didn't need Phil Dawson, but the 49ers grabbed him, and he goes to the NFC Championship game. I mean, what, it just, it, there's no rhyme or reason for what these idiots do. None. Well, and it's tough when you if you if you really dig into each individual move, you know, you can you can talk yourself in and out of everything. But the the real bottom line is that when you look at the final product, what they plan to come into this season with, and and what happened in game one, and I know it's a long season, but it's hard to have a whole lot of faith or confidence when you see that this this was their plan. Yeah, we're going to stop the run and run the football. Okay, well, you can't stop the run because Chris Ivory averaged four and a half or five, and the other guy I never heard of averaged over five a carry. And it's the same garbage that went on last year. So uh, you've done nothing. Uh, I didn't I didn't hear Danny Shelton's name at all. Did they ever blitz? Did they ever lay a hand on Ryan Fitzpatrick? And, no. again, anybody who watched the game, Craig, the, the, where, where, where the game ended – was after Johnny threw the bomb and everybody in Cleveland's going nuts. You could hear basically every sports bar's roof come off. And it's 10-7, uh, and it should be 10 nothing because uh, we had an interception, but eh, you can't really hold on to it that hard. You know, Brandon Marshall reaches back with one arm and goes, I'll take that back if you don't mind. Uh, so, uh, but it's 10-7. There's a minute 47 to go and a half, and they went into the prevent. And they clearly did it. The, the announcers talked about it. The overhead camera shot showed three guys rushing, and, in fact, the middle guy dropped off, like, in the coverage, so they were rushing two guys. And he just ran around and just picked them apart and walked right down the field, touchdown, and all the momentum, all the excitement, all the everything, out the window, 14, 10 and a half, adios, game over. That was it. And I turned to everybody and told them that was it. And the Browns never scored again, and the rest is history. I knew exactly what was going to happen when you play give-up football. And, again, these are firing offenses for me. And that's Mike Patton. He's a defensive guy. Him and his buddy Jim O'Neill, his high school sweetheart, uh, these two morons couldn't hold hands and share a brain. Nobody in their right mind would have went into a prevent with 147 to go, and you're up 10-7 on the road. I would have attacked with every damn thing I had to try and maybe get another turnover, at least to send a message, hey, we're, we're here to win. Yeah, Let you know, if you, right down the field. if you dare Ryan Fitzpatrick to beat you and then he does, that, that's, uh, that says a lot about your strategy. Thanks so much for joining me today to, uh, to break down the Browns. It's, uh, no how problem, much, Greg. How, it's uh i mean you've got tailgate 19 and and obviously you're doing yep. tons of stand-up um you know but how how much how much does it suck not to have that platform every day uh or well, do you like sleeping that in now particular platform that particular platform working with and for some of those people it doesn't suck at all okay because if you thought mike Patton and jim o'neill didn't know what the hell they were doing you know, come have lunch with me. I'll, I'll share with you about people that have no idea what the hell they're doing. And I think I think the uh, on-air product speaks for itself. Uh, it's uh, mind-boggling. Uh, my mom always said, if I didn't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a joke. And um, I, I miss a platform 
to be able to be out there and talk to the city of Cleveland. But that's okay. There's plenty of people interested. There'll be other platforms. And when they come along and there's a good opportunity, there's a lot of smart and good people in this town that know what they're doing in radio and television. I'm blessed to be working at Channel 19. Terrific people, by the way. Really smart. And, um, you know, uh, there'll, there'll be other opportunities. And when they happen, I'll be excited to, uh, to jump on it. Well, as a stand-up comedian, uh, you were you were born you were born for the podcasting genre because it's completely uncensored and you can say absolutely anything you want. Uh, I appreciate that, and that is one of the things that's being talked about, uh, and, and with a pretty exciting idea. And it wouldn't just be with me; uh, it would be with some other pretty big name people involved as well. So it's something something we're looking at, Craig, but. Um, like I said, I'm I'm excited to be part of uh, Tailgate 19. Uh, it's an incredible, you know, incredible cast. Uh, it's it's just simply the best show uh, in Cleveland, and uh, you know, uh, so at least I'm out there with a great outlet to do some Browns. But but you are right. That's before the game. I think most people want to hear from me after the game uh, because that's. Yesterday after that game is when people are just pulling their hair out. I mean, it, it's just mind-boggling. Well, I appreciate you doing it with us this week, and, and hopefully we can do it again sometime. Thanks so much. Anytime, Craig. Thanks so much, buddy, and continued success. I know you're doing great. Keep up the good work. All right. Thanks very much. Until next time, everybody, this has been the Waiting for Next com podcast. Chuck Booms on the WaitingForNextYear.com podcast. Who saw that one coming? Very happy that he was able to join us. He belongs in an uncensored environment, and whether you love or hate him, um, his opinions, it's, it's always good to have new and different voices on the podcast. So I'm very happy he was able to join us, and hopefully we can get him back again sometime, um, hopefully to talk about better Browns outcomes than what happened in the opener. This is brought to you by Audible.com, audibletrial.com forward slash WFNY, 30-day free trial, one free audiobook download, over 180,000 titles. You know you want to try it, so do so at audibletrial.com forward slash WFNY. Also, if you sign up with FanDuel, you can play fantasy football with Waiting for Next Year readers and staff and, and different people. Don't get locked into your, your bad fantasy football team. You can pick a new bad fantasy football team every week um, and, and give them your money away. No, um, sign up with FanDuel. It's tinyurl.com forward slash FanDuel WFNY. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L-W-F-N-Y, tinyurl.com forward slash FanDuel WFNY. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. We'll have uh, more guests later this week. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.